My name is John Gott, and I'm from Ken Island, Maryland, which is on the eastern shore. Uh, this is my 1944 Ward de France M1A1 Series 5 wrecker. Uh, Ward de France and Kenworth built these wreckers. When we got to the Series 5, it was then classified as military standard, which means any of the parts between the two trucks, Kenworth and Ward de France, were interchangeable. Uh, when we start here at the front, uh, we have the ripple crew here at the front. This is when I'm doing uh, a recovery from a tank. If I pull up to the rear of the tank, I would take the tow bar that is on the boom that weighs 200 pounds, and this is a, basically a load distribution, load distributing hitch. We have our front winch here, which is basically for self-recovery if the record gets stuck, or I can do some light recovery operations with the truck. You have two glad hands here, service and emergency air. What these are set up for is two purposes. One, if this truck has to get towed, the vehicle that is towing it, the operator can control the brakes on this truck. Also, if you're doing a very heavy pull, and you've got two of these trucks together doing the pull, again, the operator of the front truck controls the drive axle brakes on this truck. You would still have an operator behind the wheel here for engine and transmission functions on the truck. Moving around to this side, this is a Continental 22R 501, which is 501 cubic inch engine. This kind of tool rack, you notice it's a little different from what's standard. There's two sledgehammers here. That's specifically for this wrecker. The other side has the Pioneer tool rack that would have the pick addicts, the shovel, and the axes in it. This cab here was a cab that was designed by Studebaker. So you can see it on Studebaker, CCKWs, and Ward de France. It's the same cab up until you get to the dashboard, which is specific to this truck. And it also has a cutout right here for clearance for the dual fuel tanks. By the way, this has two saddle tanks. 50 gallons a piece. Uh, it gets about two miles to the gallon. When I'm doing boom operations at 1,000 RPMs, I'm going through a gallon of fuel about every 20 minutes. So about a three gallon an hour burn rate doing winch and crank boom operations. Up here, the truck has got a five-speed transmission. It has a two-speed transfer case. You have to stop the truck to put it in low range and also to put it from low range back into high range. The truck is rated for 45 miles an hour. The tacky speed here is about 30 miles an hour. As we move back, uh, one toolbox here, these are where the tire chains were in this toolbox. There's two snatch blocks that are stored here. We have to take the one out when we deploy the boom ja uh, stabilizer jack. The function of this is so that the frame takes the load and not the suspension when we're doing a heavy lift. Moving up to here, there's two CO2 fire extinguishers over here. You notice there's one acetylene bottle and two oxygen bottles. The toolbox that's all the way at the top has all of the gas, welding equipment in there, air hoses, and also emergency lanterns. The small box you see to the left, that's a spare parts toolbox. I have a fan belt, light bulb, spark plug in there. The two anchors you see right below that is one of four ground anchors and you'll see the black sp uh, spikes behind that. Those are ground anchors that are deployed to the front off the front winch if I'm doing a rear recovery so that the truck does not get pulled backwards. Coming back here, you'll see the little lifting eye right above the tire. That's how you lower the tire. This tire weighs 250 pounds. You have the two work lights, they're 12 volts. They turn, they can go up and down. As you go to the back, you see two hooks. On those two hooks are two snatch blocks. We actually have them laying in the bed right now because if we didn't, they would interfere with the movement of the boom. There's another toolbox here. And here are some larger hand tools, cross-cut saws, and crowbars. If you come down here, this is the storage of one of the two ground spades that are right here. They can be used in two different locations. One here, the one on the truck, depending if you're doing a side recovery or a recovery from the rear. Their function is to keep the truck from being pulled backwards. This 
anchor you see right here is for one of the boom jacks. The boom jacks can be deployed here for a heavy lift, or they can come straight down onto the ground and there's cleats on the other side so that can lift 20,000 pounds. Again, this boom is vastly underrated. You come around to the side here. This is for when I do a side recovery. Snatch block is put here. Cables run through the snatch block. I can do a right angle pull. If I need to do something on this side, this can be reversed. These two anchors right here are for the tow cable that you see up on the top. Those ends hook into here. This is the rear drag line winch here. It's rated at 47,500 pounds for a direct pull. It is operated from an operation station right here. It's powered off the power takeoff off the transfer case. There is an op a lever up there that can operate the clutch, disengage the clutch in the engine, so that can select if I want to put the winch out, put the winch in. This winch does not free spill. It has to, you have to use the clamp to do that. This is the remote throttle. It's right here. Come around this side, this is the other ground anchor. This attachment point here is for the boom sway cables, which are attached here for transport operations of the boom. Does not move back and forth. The side boards do come up here. There's some deck storage that you see. You'll see two lockers. One is here. And one is here. That's where these the rope, the rope lockers with their associated snatch blocks that are in there. This is a Plum toolbox. Uh, Plum is a company out of Los Angeles. You'll see. Or, um, Kenworth records with this toolbox because Kenworth was out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, there is another toolbox more of the France used, but I found this plum one. This has all of your wrenches, sockets, and it is stocked as per the TM that's in there. If you move down, here's a stabilizer jack in its stored position here. And this locker right here. Uh, the small hand tools for the truck, the grease gun. These are the feet if the boom jacks go down on the table. Your axle nut wrenches here, uh, sockets here. My two bottle jacks. This is the operator station right here. This is where you stand. This is, controls all functions of the boom. The raise, traverse, and the hook operations are controlled from here. Here is the other Pioneer tool rack that you will see here. This is a five gallon water container that you see here. The speed of the boom operations are actually controlled through the transmission. To do a slow operation, you're in first gear. First operation, you, I mean, fast operation, you would use direct, which is fourth gear. If you look inside the cab, you have your gear shift lever. The taller lever next to that is the parking brake. The two levers next to that are for the disengaging and engaging the front axle, and also the low and high range on the transfer case two levers that are down on the floor. The one that's in the raised position right now has actually engaged the power takeoff for the crane. The other lever would engage the front winch. The front winch operations are controlled through the transmission. You would either use reverse or first gear depending on which way you wanted the winch to go. As we move down, this is a five gallon water can. This is the other side of the truck. This is a Ross steering box here, no power steering. We have our water pump. You notice the two grease cups that are on that. You have to use a special water pump grease that's in there, which is driven off the back of the air compressor, which is then comes off an accessory drive that drives the distributor. The early trucks, as you know, World of France is known for building fire trucks. The early trucks had a dual ignition. They had a distributor and they had a magneto. You can still see the boss back there. And on the other side of the block, you'll see the boss is in the head for another set of spark plugs. So you could run the truck on battery, which would be your distributor, or mag, which would be your magneto. You move through up here, this is the siren, siren light. This is the way the truck was delivered. Okay, the siren light, blackout driving lights, your headlights, and your blackout parking lights.
The axles on the truck are built by Timken. It has a fuller transmission, a Wisconsin uh, transfer case, uh, the, um, the U-joints for Blood Brothers that are on here. Uh, one time we did time ourselves to completely service this truck, which is hitting, we lost count at 96 grease fittings and changing all the fluids, which is the gear oil, the motor oil, all the winch cases, six and a half hours. Wow. To do it. How big are the tires? The tires are an 1120. Uh, this is a Goodyear European tread design. These are the tires that were on the truck when I got it. If I was gonna put the correct NDT 1120s, which you can get, they are reproduced. They're about $850 a piece, multiplied out by 12. Wow. Okay, you can get an NDC tire, which has the rounded on it, which is a non-directional cross country. Their reproduction price is in the $400 range. Or I can keep these on here if I need to replace them.